thank y'all for being with us tonight. Amen. Amen. Is that the band doing that? Yeah, it's the band. <laughs> this mic on this side it, it covers up my ear, so I'm not able to hear what you uh you're too good. If y'all whenever we're singing, y'all ever see me doing this, pulling it away? Because I can't hear the music. So I'm singing, I don't even know if I'm singing though. What? No, I just it just I just can't it just muffles my hearing. Yeah. Well, it's good to see everybody tonight, amen. Why don't we go ahead and uh, get started tonight, um, and uh, let's just pray. Thank you for all those that are joining online, and uh, we will be here Sunday morning, right? Everything's back to normal. I don't think there's any announcements. Uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for all those that are here today, Lord, and all those that are watching tonight. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives and in our church, Lord. I pray, God, that you would just bless us, help us, Lord, to just... Uh, hear what the word has to say. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. You know, I was, uh, Brother Renee, I know he won't mind me saying this. Brother Renee was telling me after church, he said, when we begin to sing Good, Good Father, Sunday church, he said he just felt goosebumps just come all over his body. I thought that's the presence and the power of God. Amen. So, you know, I always tell my grandma, you know, when, when I'm up here uh, singing, you know, I know you can't look back because you don't want to be looking back, you know, but I begin to see people weep and begin to see the Lord touch people. And I think it's so amazing. Amen. Because that just shows you that there's times that we don't have to lay hands on anybody. The Lord just does right where he's at. Amen. And all you have to do is just reach out and, and receive it by faith. Amen. When you receive it by faith, God will do a work in your life. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go to John chapter three. John chapter three. John chapter 3. I don't know if this is going to be a series, and I'm going to have to do it next week. We already, Jamie knows this. We talked about it already. Or we can finish it today. But I do want to talk about something. Are you all there? No, John, John chapter 3. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> the Apostle John. John chapter 3 again. It's verses 1 through 7 we're going to read. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Now notice Nicodemus is, is question. Nicodemus is thinking natural, right? Nicodemus is like, okay, how can somebody be born again when they're already old? Let's keep reading. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, Unless one is born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Verse 7, the last verse. Do not marvel that I said unto you, you must be born again. Now, Nicodemus, the Bible says, comes to Jesus by night. <laughs> you know why he comes to Jesus by night? I, this is my opinion. I don't know. I'm just speculating. But I believe he comes to Jesus by night because he doesn't want his fellow Jews to know that he's in, he's inquiring of the Lord. Because how I many of you know the Jews rejected Jesus Christ? Amen. That's why 70 A.D. happened. The book of Revelations is about the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. But who was destroyed in 70 A.D.? The unbelieving Jews. Those that rejected Christ, rejected the apostles were the ones that were destroyed during the temple's destruction. So Nicodemus comes to Jesus, and Nicodemus is a very, according to research that I did today, Nicodemus is, was probably a very wealthy man during his day. So this is not a pauper. This is not a poor man. This was a wealthy man, and he would have sat on the Sanhedrin. If he was a, a Pharisee, he would have sat on the Sanhedrin. He would have been part of the governing of that day. Now, during Jesus' time, Rome was dominating, right? But Rome also let the Jews in certain areas 
have control of the people. I got with you. And so he comes to Jesus and he tells Jesus, hey, you know what? We see that you're doing miracles. In, in order for you to be doing miracles, God has got to be with you, man. And if you notice Nicodemus' conversation with Jesus, it takes a turn. Because Jesus doesn't even acknowledge Crystal that he says, yeah, God's with me. It's like he avoids the question. And he tells, it's like, in Jesus' mind, it's like, what you're telling me is not important. What's more important is, have you been born again? Have you been born again? And I want you to look, look at verse 3, just for example. I want you to notice how many times the phrase is born again is mentioned. Verse 3 Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Look at verse 4, the next verse. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? The ver last verse, Pastor Jamie. Verse 7, right at the bottom. Jesus tells Nicodemus, You must be born again. Now you say, Pastor, no. This question's been on my mind, and I want us to look at it again today. How many of you know sometimes we hear things, and we just, we hear it, but we don't hear it? You know what I'm trying to say? Like, I can tell you something, but you don't, you're not really listening to what's being said. You know? I, I do that when I'm distracted. If I'm distracted, you know, somebody can tell me something, I'll be like, yeah. They're like, why are you stuttering? You're not listening right. I said, no, I'm not listening. <laughs> But when when I have my attention, when you have my attention, I'll, I'll engage with you. But when I was reading this, one of the things that I started thinking about, and this is what I want to ask y'all tonight, and this is kind of where I'm going to go with this. What does it mean to be a Christian? What is that really? When, when we say, "I'm a Christian," or "I'm saved," what does that really mean? Just, just don't answer me. I want y'all to think about that tonight. When you say, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, what does that mean to you? And those that are watching, what does it mean to you when you tell somebody or you say, I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian or I, I got saved? You know, I was thinking this week, Patrick, I've been serving the Lord for 21 years. You know how I know that? Because I was a freshman in high school when I took my faith seriously got baptized and everything, and I really started seeking the Lord my freshman year. So, hey, I'll never forget, just 2000 all the way up. <laughs> so I've been in this thing for a long time already. It'll make me feel old. But w when you tell people, w are you a Christian, or what does it mean to be saved? How many of you know that most people think being saved means not going to hell? Right? Not not going to hell. And, and it's funny because I think when we were on our, on our way to Arizona, so many times we saw billboards. Maybe you've seen them in Houston, like billboards that said, if you were to die today, where would you go? And one part of the billboard has a beautiful blue sky, brother Edward. And the, on the other side of the billboard, it has a fire. <laughs> and it says hell. <laughs> and I'm like, man, what a way to draw the people. And then it has a phone number at the bottom saying, if you don't know, call this number. So when, when we talk to Christians, most Christians only know that it means that I'm forgiven. You know, when I say I'm a Christian, I'm saved, it means that God forgave me of my sins. God, God cleansed me of all my sins. Or it means that I get a, like, like Monopoly, I get a get out of free hell card. I got fire insurance now, right? I'm not going to the pit. I'm going to heaven with the Lord. And most of our Christianity today is always about the afterlife. And I want to encourage you to know that most of your Bible is not about the afterlife. It's about this life. Are you, God's not interested in bringing you to heaven. He's interested in bringing heaven to earth. Come on, somebody. I'm <laughs> preaching good already. <laughs> I, I love what Dr. Lin says on his TV show. Dr. He, don't ha he changed it. But on his introduction on his show, he used to always say, I don't want to make heaven my home. I want to make my home more like heaven. I said, my God, that's so good. Right? But... When you say I'm a Christian, it, it, it makes me think of this idea of being born again. Because being a Christian is not that you're just forgiven. 
being a Christian doesn't mean you're not gonna, you, you just won't go to hell. Now, again, let me just say this for clarification. All of that is true, right? We don't want to go to hell. We want to go to heaven, right? We don't want to be, we want to be forgiven people, right? All of that's true. But that's not the way Jesus presents it to Nicodemus. What Jesus tells Nicodemus, Mary, is that you must be born again. In order for you to save the, the kingdom of God, you must be born again. I want y'all to think about that. To be a Christian, I'm just going to jump the gun and just say it right away. To be a Christian means you are born again. I'm going to say it again. Being a Christian means you are born again. Now, the word again is not a good translation. It shouldn't say born again, brother Edward. It should say born from above. Jesus is, asked, Jesus is telling Nicodemus, unless you are born from above, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. No, notice what he says, Mary Elon. Oh, this just, this just came to my spirit right now. Notice what Jesus tells Nicodemus. Unless you're born again or born from above, he didn't say you can't enter the kingdom of God right away. He says you can't even see it. Yes. You cannot even see the kingdom of God until you've been born again. We're not even talking about going there yet. We're talking about if you want to see it, you got to be born again. And I'm going to answer some questions tonight because I know a lot of people don't understand this idea of being born again. What, it, what does it mean to be born again? Now watch this. 1 Peter chapter 1. I want you to also notice when we read this scripture, I want you to notice how Paul, the apostle Paul, I mean not Paul, I'm sorry, Peter picks up the same language as Jesus. Watch this. 1 Peter chapter 1, Pastor Jamie. I'm sorry, I didn't put no scriptures up there for you. Verses 22 through 23. Now look what Peter says. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently. Oh, with a pure heart. Man, we could preach on that. Because do we love people fervently? Not too much. A fervent love is a what? It's an intentional love. It's like, it's like a fire love, a fierce, a strong love. That's the kind of love we're supposed to have for one another, guys. And look what he says, verse 23. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Now, verse 23, he says, having been born again. It could be translated, having been born from above. I'm going to give you another definition. Are you ready? It actually says in this, in this particular scripture, it says, having been born anew. Jesus said, you got to be born from above. Peter says, you got to be made new. To be a Christian, Diane, means you're a new person. You are born again. I'm going to say it again. You're born again. Pastor Larry, are you sure? I'm going to show you. I'm very positive about this. Look at 2 Corinthians. I, I know I'm reading a lot of scripture and just kind of moseying along slowly. But sometimes I get too excited. And, you know, I really want to really teach this tonight. Okay? This has been burning in my spirit. I don't know why, but it's just been burning in me to talk about this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Y'all all know this scripture. Man, we quote this scripture so much in this church. Y'all should have it tattooed on your forehead. Look what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, say it with me, he is a, 
Okay, y'all sound like the old creation. Let's say it again. If anyone is in Christ, he is a creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Okay, now let's all now we read three scriptures so far, right? Let's let's put them all together. Jesus says you got to be born from above. Peter said you got to be born anew, right? That's what I told you I meant. It meant to be born anew. The English says born again, but it's actually be born anew. But Paul picks it up because Paul wrote the book of Corinthians, and he says you got to be a, you're going to become a new creation. You're a new species. <laughs> Pastor Jamie didn't know I was going to say this because I wanted to make you laugh, Pastor Jamie. We were, me and Pastor Jamie have been watching a documentary documentary about, uh, what's her name, Jamie? Sherry Schreiner. Does anybody know who Sherry Schreiner is? Sherry Schreiner was a cult leader. She was a woman who was a cult leader, and she said that everybody was an alien. And she would use the Bible to say that people were aliens. Yeah. Wendy, uh, I don't know if y'all know who Wendy Williams is. She's like a celebrity talk show host. Wendy Williams, she was doing her show one time, and she passed out, Albert, on TV. She passed out. Y'all remember hearing that? Well, when she passed out, sh that Shirley, what's her name again? Sherry, Shir Sherry Schreiner. Y'all don't forget that name because I ain't going to say it again. But she said that the reason why Wendy Williams fell out is was because her alien spirit was malfunctioning. <laughs> and and do you know that three about two or three people committed suicide from the documentary because of her ministry? And and so I was thinking about this, Pastor Jamie. So what sh the Sherry lady is saying is that there's a new species in town, right? There's a new creation. There's an alien creation in this world. But do y'all know that that's the same word that Paul uses here? Do y'all know what Paul's actually saying here? Paul's saying that when you become a Christian, you're a new species. You're new. You're new. Everybody's looking at me like, I'm not, I'm not new. I'm still 125 pounds overweight. <laughs> so am I. No, I'm just like, right? My back still hurts, right? Your back still hurts. You wake up with aches and pains, right? I had such a bad headache last night. The, I, my, my headache was hurting so bad, I woke up in the middle of the night. Grandma, my headache was hurting so bad. I was like, Lord. But I'm, but I'm a new creation, right? Because I accepted Christ. Now, watch this. Let me show you another scripture. Oh, this is gonna, it's going to get deeper. Are you all ready? Here we go. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. I haven't said what I really want to say, but I'm going somewhere. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. First John is at the end by the book of Revelation. Look what he says. John, uh, did I give it to you, Pastor Jamie? 1 John chapter 3, verse Oh, this is going to bless you. Wh whoever has been born of God. Y'all see that phrase again? Bor there's that word, born of God. Born again, born from above, new creation. Notice the language that we're reading. He says, whoever has been born of God does not sin for his seed. Say seed. seed. Remains in him and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. Watch this. I'm going to blow you away because God's semen Remains in him. The word for seed there, Annie, and I'm not trying to be graphic because I know there's kids listening, but it's actually the word where we get the word sperm. You are new because you have God's sperm in you. Now, how many of you know if there has to be an egg and sperm, right, in order for a child to be, and now, unless you're Virgin Mary, then you you had a miraculous conception. But it takes the father and the mother to produce a child. And what Jesus is saying is that you're from my loins. Somebody told me one time, what year were you born? I, I said, what year were you born? 
They said, 1980. I said, I was still in the loins of my father. I'm just going to say it like that. Y'all read it between the lines. Right? I saw somebody one time. They, 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 they showed a picture of a sperm on their Facebook. They said, this is my baby picture. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But, but the word, let me dig deeper into this, get off of that. But the word sperm here, the word seed is the Greek word sperma. It's where we get our English word sperm from, okay, honestly. And the word for seed here is sperma, but, it, but its English definition means genetics or his characteristics or his nature. I'm going to say it again. I want you all to think about these, these scriptures that I'm reading to you all, guys. He says, whoever has been born of God will not sin. Why? Because you have God's sperm. You have God's genetics. You have God's character. And you have God's nature. What is John saying here? John is saying, guys, that we as Christians cannot live in sin because we are born again. In other words, you're not a forgiven person only. And I'm going to say something else that I really want you all to grasp. Don't ever say and don't ever buy a shirt that says sinner saved by grace. Now, I know that we like to say that. But you're no longer a sinner. You are born again. You are a new creation. What I'm trying to tell you all tonight is that when you say you're saved, when you say I am a Christian, what you're saying is that I'm a new Larry. I have changed in the inside. Something about my DNA has changed. And according to, and I'm not trying to beat on sin tonight because that's not my topic, but I just want y'all to pay attention to the scripture. You, you cannot live in sin because you've been born again. Now, here's what people ask me, Brother Albert. We're saved by grace, right? Yes. Apart from our works, right? Now, I want everybody to put their pens down and put your Bible down. And I want you to put one hand up. That's part of the gospel. Part of the gospel is that you're saved by grace through faith. Well, put your other hand up. But you need both. And the other part is that w the moment you got saved by grace, God made you a new creation. You can put your hands down. What am I saying? God doesn't leave you the same way you were. You're a new person in Christ now. And when you know you're a new person in Christ and you believe that you're a new person in Christ, then you're not going to want to do the old things you used to do anymore. <laughs> yes. And it's, it's so that, so, and I'm glad you brought that up, Brother Albert, because that's what I was trying to get at. See, I get, I get distracted. But so people ask me, Brother Albert, people say things like, Pastor Larry, and my grandma knows because we used to have this at our Bible study when we first started at the house. People would say, okay, so you're saying we're born, you're saying we can't earn our salvation, right? So, so if I commit adultery, I'm saved. And the answer is yes, on one side of the coin. On one side, you can still commit adultery and be saved be if, because you can't earn it. If you stop committing adultery, that doesn't make you saved because that would be works salvation. Are y'all following me? But what I am saying to you is that once you do get saved, you're going to you're not going to want to live that way anymore because God's going to make you a new creature in Christ. You ain't going to want to cuss like a sailor no more. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm not saying it might not slip out, but I'm saying that there's people that they say they're Christians and they cuss more than they speak in tongues. Are you with me? And I'm saying that we need to change that. Yes. Pastor Larry, I can't help it. Well, no, you can't help it. Because if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 
And, and, and Pastor Larry, are you trying to preach against sin today? No. What I really want y'all to leave here with, and if you don't leave here with this, I want you to leave here with this. My, the, our Bible study tonight is about y'all understanding that the moment you got saved, you got a new creation spirit in you. God made you new. And, Annie, there's a lot of people that don't know that. That's why, Diane, you see people that go to church 25 years, 26 years, and they're always like, well, I'm, tr- I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to live this life. I'm trying to do this for God. You don't need to try to do anything. You need to start from the mindset that I'm new, that who I am is not who I was anymore. Now, watch this. I want you to go back to John chapter 3. Pastor, how am I new? Pastor, how can you say that I'm new when I still get pimples on my face? Pastor Larry, how can you say that I'm new, Pastor Larry, when I still cuss when my husband makes me mad? (laughs) Come on now. When my kids do things that they shouldn't do. Right? When the waiter makes me mad and brings me something. I, I remember the other day, I ordered enchiladas. Chicken enchiladas. I go to Diamond W's about three times a week. Our, uh, brother Edward, the last time I called, they said, is this Jamie? I said, yes, it is. They, re- they already know who we are. And I ordered chicken enchiladas. I was so excited. I was hungry. Open the plate, and it's beef enchiladas <laughs> with onions and bell peppers all over it. And let me tell you something. When you're hungry and they mess up your order, I will be honest with you. I almost forget I'm a Christian sometimes. <laughs> Are you with me? So, Pastor Larry, how can you say that you're a Christian if you want to get mad at the lady for messing up your order? I'm going to tell you all that tonight because I know you're probably saying, I don't feel it. I don't. Because how many of you all know, let's be honest, okay, all kidding aside, how many of you know there's times you come to church and it's hard to focus during worship? You're here, but you're not here. You know what I'm trying to say? You're here, your body's here, but your mind's focused on the situation that you're facing. Or maybe about the things that you got to do this week. And you're saying, but Pastor Larry, if I'm, if I'm new, Pastor Larry, why do I have this struggle? Why do I still fight these issues? Because I'm going to answer that question tonight, okay? Go, go back to John chapter, John chapter 3. I know we were there earlier, but I want you to read something else with me. John chapter 3, verse 6 through 7. The same, the same section of scriptures that we read about Nicodemus. But we're going to read it. I di- I didn't, we didn't read the whole thing. Now, look what it says, Mary Alice. It says, and how many of y'all, okay, let's, before we read it, just, let's just review. He told Nicodemus you've got to be born again, right? Okay, so, but now no, Jesus is going to explain more what he means. He says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now let's now watch this. I, I, I'm going to read it. Y'all just listen to me. Follow along on the screen. That which is born of capital S spirit is lowercase s spirit. Did you catch it? What is wh- what is what is he saying? He's saying you may not feel new, but your spirit is made new. Inside your heart is your spirit. What do you mean, Pastor Larry? When you go to the funeral and you say, my grandma is in heaven with Jesus now. Well, how is your grandma in heaven with Jesus if her body's laying right there in the coffin? What do you, what do you, what do, what are people saying when they say their grandma or their daddy or their mama is in heaven with Jesus? What are they saying? They're saying that the spirit is gone home to be with the Lord. Are y'all with me? So uh, the lowercase spirit gives birth to the, I mean the capital uh, S spirit gives birth to the lowercase spirit, which is our spirit. The capital S is always God's spirit. And the lowercase S is always our spirit. So that which is born of God's spirit is spirit. So if you're 
born again of God, then your spirit has become new, guys. As a Christian, we have a new spirit. Adam, how many of y'all know that God made Adam and Eve? But do y'all, y'all know, you know what you miss? You miss that the Bible says, and God breathed into Adam. You know what the word for breath is? When the Bible says that God breathed into him, you know what the word is there in the Hebrew? It's ruah. You know what ruah means in Hebrew? It means breath, wind, or spirit. So Adam was like a statue. Let's say I'm Adam. I'm like this. But the moment God breathed in me, I became a living person. You know why? Because your body is not you. Your, your body that, that you see in the mirror is just a house, a shell that houses your spirit. Okay? Let me show you another scripture. First Peter chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. Is this okay tonight? It's Bible study. See, the Bible always has the questions. The Bible always has the answers to the questions that we are asking. We just got to look it up. Now, look at what Peter says to the church. He says, Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have tamed like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God, and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So through through God's spirit, we had everything we need. Amen? Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given to us Exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers, what? Of his divine nature. Now, what is God? Does anybody know what God is? God is a spirit. So if we are partakers of his nature, we're partakers of what? His spirit. If God is spirit, then we are partakers of his spirit. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through the lust. So we're partakers of his nature. So when you got saved, oh, let me say it this way. If God is, a, okay, let me say it this way. If you look at me, I look like Martinez. Right? Got Martinez forehead, everything. Big old forehead. God knew I was going to be Pentecostal so they can lay a hand, big hand on my forehead. Amen? But I look like Martinez, right? So why do I look like Martinez? Because I took on the the genetics of my father, right? If God is spirit and he gives us his sperm, if I can say it that way, he gives us his sperm, his genetics, then we become what? Spirit beings. See, guys, what you see around you is is not who you really are. All of this stuff, you guys, that we see is just temporal. What's the real you is your spirit. The spirit man inside of you is the real you, Gramps. Now, let me show you a scripture. I mean, let me show you a picture. Now, we all have seen some of this picture, but some of you are new, so I want you to see it. Watch this. Now, the bottom, I mean, let's start, it goes from the top to the bottom. Now, don't worry about the, don't worry about the little words. I just want you to focus on the triangles in the very top. The other stuff is not important today. But notice the very top is what? The Holy Spirit, which is what? God's Spirit. And notice that God's Spirit, Diane, gets in your spirit. You see the arrow? And then your spirit affects your soul. And your soul affects your body. Now, now I want everybody to... So, when you become a, a, a new creation, the Bible says your spirit and God's spirit become one. They become joined together. Right? They become one person. Right? Now, Brother Edward and Jonathan, can you come to the front, please? I need the illustration. <laughs> I 
You don't have to come with your mask. It's okay. You want to hide your identity? <laughs> come in front of my table so the camera people can see. Face the people. Okay. Now, Jonathan, how old are you? 30? Okay, come stand by your dad. So 30 years ago, Brother Edward was enjoying the pleasures of Lori. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's true. Right? And through, now how many of y'all know that Jonathan looks like Brother Edward to me? Right? That's his son. He can't deny him. But what happened? Now put your arms together like if you're standing in like in a wedding. Brother Edward's genetics got in Jonathan's genetics. See, that's what happens with us. We become one with God. John, Jonathan represents us. Now, separate your arms. Apart from Christ, we're like this. But when you say yes to Christ, you know what happens? Y'all become one with each other. And whatever Brother Edward has belongs to Jonathan. Now, does Brother Edward have peace? Don't, I'm, Brother Edward's God, remember. Don't think about Brother Edward. Brother Edward has got peace. But does Brother Edward have peace? Does Brother Edward have joy? Does Brother Edward have uh, holiness? So when he interlocks his arms with Jonathan, they become one spirit. Go ahead. Is Jonathan righteous? Okay, now it's a trick question. How is Jonathan righteous? Because Brother Edward made him righteous. How is Jonathan holy? Because Brother Edward made him holy. How is Jonathan saved? Because Brother Edward saved him. Or God saved him. Y'all get my point, right? Thank y'all. Give the guys a hand clap. Amen? See, a lot of people don't have this understanding of new creation. Guys, you have to know you're a new creation. If you don't get this in your mind, it's not going to work for you. Right? Now, Pastor Larry, now the soul, and Alice, the soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your mind, your will, and your emotions. Are y'all with me? Now, Albert, come over here. Mary, come over here. My grandma, come over here. Three, we're going to use volunteers. <laughs> now, Mary, I want you to stand right here in front of me and face the people. Okay, Albert, stand right here next to Mary. Just face like my grandma. Grandma, you're doing great. Just like that. That's a perfect position. Now, Brother Edward, I mean Brother Edward, Albert, Brother Albert is God. Now, Brother Albert is the spirit, okay? He, he represents the Mary's spirit and God's spirit. So you're, you're two people today. You're, you're Holy Spirit, God's spirit, right? And he's also Mary's spirit. Now, Mary represents the soul, okay? And my grandma, she represents Mary's situations that she's facing. Now, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. How many of you in here by a show of hands have ever got pissed at something? Okay, let's be real. Me too. Now, Mary's the soul, right? But why did Mary get pissed? Turn to my grandma. Because Mary's looking at her circumstances. Turn your body, face her like, f turn your body like, just like that. See, God is trying, God, Albert, is trying to give Mary's soul peace. Yes. He's trying to give her love and joy. But you know why Mary can't receive it? Because her emotions are focused on the things that she sees. But if Mary were to turn around, go ahead, Mary, and draw from her spirit and God's spirit, she would see everything behind me is going to work out because I'm focusing on what God has given me. See, I ask you this. Don't y'all stay there, guys, for a minute. I ask you when people when people ask me, Pastor, why am I always stressed? Pastor, I I know I'm a Christian, but I don't have no joy. You know why you don't have no joy? Because you're too busy looking at Sister Gloria. You're too busy looking at your circumstances. 
But if you would turn your feelings off and draw on the Lord, on draw from Albert. Albert, Albert is your spirit. Albert is God's spirit, and they're wanting to connect with you. Then you know what, you know what happens to your will? Your will will submit to God. You won't have a problem loving people. You know why? Because you're drawing from the Lord. Turn around to my grandma. How can how can Mary draw? How can Mary forgive her situation if she's focused on it like that? See, Mary's the soul, right? Mary's Mary's those bad feelings. She's struggling to let go of the forgiveness. She's struggling to. She still wants to be bitter. She's still feeling angry. She's still blaming people for how she was treated and what was done to her. Now, is everything that happened to Mary true? Yes. We're not denying your situation, guys. But what I'm saying to you is if Mary the if Mary or the soul would turn around, sorry, Mary, turn back around, and she would focus on the Lord more, on her spirit, then you know what Mary or the soul is going to begin to feel? Peace, joy, righteousness, and forgiveness. Amen, somebody. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Thank you all. Y'all can sit down. John chapter 17, verse 16. <laughs> oh, I hope this is helping somebody tonight. John chapter 17, verse 16. Now watch this. We've ever, we, how many, how many, we've, we've always read this scripture, but we don't ever know what it means. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. What it's actually, now I'm just going to tell you what it's saying in the Greek. What it's actually saying in the Greek is their origin is not of this world because my origin is not of this world. What is God saying? This is what God is saying. you got to stop thinking like the world thinks because you are not from this world. You are from above. Amen, somebody? Just because everybody else is bitter don't mean you got to be bitter. Just because everybody else is hateful don't mean you got to be hateful. Amen? You can be the change in a situation. Why? Because you're not of this world. How come you don't do what they do? Because I'm not of this world. How come, I don't, how come you don't talk the way they talk? Because I'm not of this world. I live in peace. I live in joy. I live in forgiveness. Amen? I'm not going to let what's going on. I'm not, I'm not going to become bitter because they hurt me. I'm not going to become angry because they do things to me. Amen? Now, when, when, I say, when I say not becoming angry, that's not really the word I want to use. I'm saying when you live in that anger. You know what I'm trying to say? Like The Bible says, because the, the, if I say don't get angry, I'm not being honest. Because the Bible says get angry, but sin not. So it's okay to get angry. But I'm talking about when you live in that anger. When you live in that bitterness, when you live in that unforgiveness, when you live in that hate, uh, there's people that are so hateful, they're poison. And the more you talk, and, and when you start talking to them, Annie, about why they're so angry, they start getting emotional. You know why they get, they, they get emotional? Because their soul is not tuning into their spirit. But when we change our, our mind and begin to look at our spirit, then we begin to see what God is doing in our lives. That's why you have to renew your mind. The Bible says, Jamie, do it real quick if you wouldn't mind. Uh, Romans chapter uh, 12, 1 and 2. <laughs> Pastor, how do I get my soul under control? What did I say your soul is? Your mind, your will, and your emotion. That's your soul. So if you listen to me, if you stay up, if you stay up at night worried about your bills, what's bothering you? Your soul. I'll say it again. Just to help you, if, if you're staying up late, late worried about your bills, what's bothering you? Your soul. If you're staying up late stressed about your kids, what is that? Your soul. If you feel lonely, what is that? Your soul, your emotions, right? 
I just want you all to grasp that. But notice how transformation happens. Well, let's, let's just look at verse 2. Don't look at verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, that you present your bodies. We know all that. Look at verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Say transformed. What does it mean to be transformed? It means to be changed, right? To be changed, how? By the renewing of your soul. By the renewing of your mind. Remember, they're all the same. The mind, the soul, the emotions, they're all the same. So Paul says, if you want to see change, then you've got to change the way you think. You've got to change the way you think. That's why we struggle. Because our soul. Let me tell you what's happening. I see some of you I'm, as your pastor. I, I, this is not condemnation. This is just my concern for you. I see some of y'all come in here and I can see that you're carrying a heavy load. You've had a stressful week. You're tired. But you know why you're not enjoying the joy of the Lord? Because you're not drawing from your spirit. If I asked you, how was your week? Oh, it's been stressful. Oh, man. I don't even know where to start, Pastor Larry. And you started telling me, right, all of these things going on. The car broke down. The air condition messed up. At the, the light, something, something broke. The pipes broke. You know? Got a ticket on the freeway. And what happens? I'm trying to preach, and the lady's trying to mow the yard. Jesus, help me. <laughs> <laughs> but my thing is this. Why do you come in so heavy? Just think about it. Why do you come in so heavy? Because your soul is weighed down. But what you need to do is you need to transform your soul. And the way you transform your soul is by renewing your mind. And you know how you renew your mind? By getting in the good book. Start praying. Start seeking the Lord. Get in the word of God. Amen? Because the more you start changing, the more it's going gonna, it's gonna to transform your way you think. Guys, I promise you, I'm going to close with this. Well, I'm at one more scripture. I'm almost, I got a few more minutes. Let me say this to you guys. There was a situation that came up that's been bothering me, and I had to deal with it. And, and it's been bothering me and bothering me and bothering me. But you know what? A after I talk and I pray about it, I put some worship music on, you know what it does? It, it changes my atmosphere. You know? But sometimes, Annie, it, it takes a little effort on your part. Because when you're pissed, you're not thinking about going to worship. You're thinking about, boy, she better not be home because I'm going to go kick the door down. You know what I'm trying to say? That type of attitude. Uh, she better answer the phone because she's going to get cussed out type thing, you know? Especially like, why you talk like that? Because that's where some of you live. Let's be real, amen? Y'all don't wake up every day sleeping with the Bible and going to bed with the Bible. <laughs> we live in the real world, amen? That's why I talk to y'all like that. But my point is this, is that, Albert, I didn't want to at the moment. But I had to force myself to do it, Albert. And, the, and when I started doing it, Mary... The emotions didn't go away right away. I was still focused on what I was feeling. I was still thinking about what was bothering me. But the more I kept doing it, five minutes, ten minutes, you know what happened, Crystal? It began to change. And that joy came to me. This, listen, the situation may not change, but you changed. And the atmosphere changed. Why? Because you turned your focus from Gloria to Albert, from your situation to God. And when you change your soul, you're going to enjoy the best life, guys. Listen to me. And I want you all to hear this. If you don't ever hear anything this pastor preaches, you hear this. M we do not have a spiritual problem. We have a soul problem. Because your spirit is already one with the Lord. I'm going to say it again. Christians do not have a spiritual problem. You have a soul problem you know when the devil torments you it's not tormenting your spirit he's tormenting your mind your soul because your spirit's already one with the lord that's why every time i come in here and i tell you church let's push through let's draw listen to the word listen to what i'm telling you write it down or meditate on what i'm saying when you leave this place why because i want you to change your thinking 
So when you can face a situation, you know, when a situation comes into your life, it's not going to steal your joy so quick. Come on. Because, they're, you know, when you first become a Christian, that, that co-worker may tick you off. But the more you start getting in the word, getting in the word, five months, six months, Diane, when she starts nagging, you're going to be like, Lord, bless her, Lord. She got a problem. Lord, I'm not going to let her steal my joy. Right? We sing that song. I refuse. I won't let nobody steal my joy. Steal my joy. That's why Jesus said, what did Jesus say? He said, my peace I give to you. And what does the next verse say? Not as the world gives. See, the world doesn't give us the joy that we need. God does. One more scripture and I'm done, I promise. I got five minutes, I'm doing good. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. Now you're new, right? Where are you new at? Somebody tell me out. In your spirit. Help, I'm going to ask again. I want everybody to participate so you hear yourself saying it. Where are you new? In your spirit. Your spirit is one spirit with the Lord, right? Amen. You're that Edward and Jonathan picture, okay? But the problem is our what? Our mind, our soul. That's good. Whatever you want to say. I say soul, mind, just to help you all out. They're all the same. If you say mind, you're saying soul. If you say soul, you're saying mind. All the same. But so, so if that's our issue, notice how Paul uses this language. Now, when you read the scripture, it's going to open your eyes because you're going to see what Paul is saying. Watch this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. If then you are raised with Christ. Now, stop. Where are you raised with Christ? In your soul or in your spirit? In your spirit. So he's talking spiritually. He says, if you're raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So everything he's saying is spirit. He's saying you were raised with Christ, you're seated with Christ, all of that is spiritual, amen? But then he changes it and he starts dealing with the soul, verse 2. So set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Do you see that? He says, now that you're raised with Christ, now that you're seated with Christ, else, he says, put your mind there. When pe- let me tell you something. When people tell me, Pastor Larry, I just cannot forgive them. I've had people tell me that, Diane. And I do sympathize with people that cannot forgive. It's forgiveness takes the grace of God. It really does. Amen. But let me say this to you, Diane. You can forgive. I'm not saying you. I'm just talking to you in general. You can forgive, Diane. You know why? Because you have God's forgiveness in you. Amen. It's just that you've got to get your soul right. And you got to get your mind right. And you got to ask the Lord to help you. Church, let me tell you something. If you can't forgive, you know what? You need to pray, Lord, give me your forgiveness. Say, Pastor, I can't love them. Pastor, they hurt me. Okay? No condemnation, right? There's no condemn. Don't ever. S- let me tell you something. Don't ever say you can do everything because you can't. You need the grace of God. So there's going to be times where you can't forgive or you can't love them. So if you struggle with that, what you need to say is, Lord, give me your love. Lord, teach me to love the way you love, God. Lord, you know they've hurted me. God, you know that this situation is really upsetting me. And, Lord, I can't see it all the way out of it. But, Lord, I know you can, Father. So, God, I know it's in me, Lord. I know that forgiveness is here. Help me to release it, Lord. Help me to truly give what you've given me. And how do you do that? By setting your mind on things above. So what does it mean to be a Christian? It means that you are born again. That you're no longer the old person, but you're a new creation in Christ. Well, Pastor, if I'm new, where at? It's in your spirit. We just answered a lot of questions. Think of, I'm going to say it again because it just excites me. Think of, I want y'all to, in your mind, look at all the questions we answered tonight. What does it mean to be a Christian? To be saved. It means to be born again. That's the first question. The second question we answered tonight is, where are we born again? In our spirit. So, Pastor, like, why, do I feel, why do I still struggle? Because our soul is out of whack. 
we done covered five questions in less than an hour. Look how much I've learned in an hour. That's why you need to come to Bible study. So you can hear the word of God. And so you can learn these things that are in the word of God. So when you do it, and you can walk these things out. Amen? Give Lord a hand clap. Amen? Praise the Lord. Why don't we stand? I'll let you go. I promise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for his goodness. Who's the wife? Rosa. Rosa. I don't know. Wow. That's what you were talking about, right? Mary Alice mentioned that when she came in. What's her name? Rosa? Rosa? Okay, we'll pray for the family. Anybody else? Your grandson? Okay. Yes. Okay. We believe in God for healing. Amen. God can turn it around. Yes. Uh, you said for Ms. Rose. Yes. The Garza family? Okay. Let's continue to pray for my, my uh, cousin's in-laws. They've been battling COVID and stuff like that, so uh, we're going to continue to pray for them. Amen. Anybody else? Okay. If I forget, guys, please forgive me because, you know, I get up here praying. I, for, I leave and I'm like, oh, man, I forgot to mention that request. So Y'all know I'm praying for it, okay? Let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all those that are here tonight. Father, thank you for the word that went forth tonight, Father. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy and your Help us, Lord, to grow in these truths tonight. And, Lord, before we leave, Father, we just lift up Rosalinda's family to you, Lord. Lord, give them comfort right now, Lord. Lord, we know what it is to lose people that we love, God, but I know that you're there surrounding them with your love and your peace, God. Lord, let your ministering angels just begin to encamp around them. Lord, even as we pray right now, Father, they're going to begin to experience and feel your peace and comfort. You said, Lord, that you are a healer of broken hearts. Lord, I know right now as we pray, you're embracing them, showering them with your love. And we know that you're going to get glory out of this and out of their lives, Lord. And we thank you for it, Lord. Lord, we pray for Diane's grandson as well, Father. I pray, Lord, that you just touch him right now, Father. Lord, I come against that MS, Lord. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you for doctors, Lord, but we believe your report. And your report says that he is healed, that he is whole, Lord, and that every bone in his body, every cell, every nerve, Lord, is beginning to function the way it's called to function, God. And we speak life to his body. We speak healing to his body, Lord. Healing is his right because you paid for it on the cross. And we release it over him in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. And we pray for, for Annie's uh, worker, Lord. I pray, Lord, you just touch him right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch Rose, God, right where she's at, Father God. Lord, whatever she needs, shower her with your goodness, Lord, and your love, Lord. You know every need that she has, and we thank you for it, God. And, Lord, we pray for the Lopez family, Lord, in Bay City, Lord, and Markham, Lord. I ask you to touch them right now, Father. We come against that COVID situation, Lord. I ask you to touch them right there in the hospital where he's at, Father God. Lord, I come against that COVID. I speak to his lungs, and I begin to command them to open up. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, breathe, breathe your breath of life into his lungs right now. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, and we thank you for it. By his stripes, he is, by your stripes, he is healed. We receive it and we speak it. And Lord, bless your people today as they leave this place. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Church, I love you. Amen. We'll see you Sunday morning, 10 o'clock.